I'll come back to the channel, it's Mark from Powersonic. You'll see behind me we have another Sage Energy system. This one is a bit of a beast. It's a full stack on domestic premises again. So we've got an entire build up of this one and most excitingly, the brand new gateway to the side of me there. We're gonna go into that in detail. I'll show you exactly what's in that and how it works. And I can tell you right at the start of this video, it is completely silent. Just to take the start of the video as well, a massive thank you to our customers for looking after us on this one. It's been an absolute pleasure to do this project. It has been a bit of a unique one in terms of the smart part and its integration, and we do have the potential for solar coming on this one in the not too distant future as well. So if you're a customer who's looking for one of these in your home, please do get in touch with us. There'll be a link in the description where you can go off and do so. But without any further waffle at the start of the video, let's get straight to it and see how this came to be. So this was our cable route and it was an interesting one. Unfortunately, the roof space had no access to it, solid floors, but we had to get from this location here, which is the main intake. We'll speak a bit about that later on in the video when we've made our final connections and punched through this wall into the roof void, just the other side of there. And that was full of Kingspan. It was looked to have been done as a cold roof. So there was a big void above the Kingspan and it was just trying to make a bit of space in there and make sure we put that back afterwards as well to ensure we're maintaining the heat protection and the roof structure and design down the road. And we had to make a couple of access holes just to get our cables rotted across. See neatly in this cupboard here, we're all our kit with the trunking set out underneath the gateway. And we've got our new shield that can go on that gateway to help hide all that away. We've got a little access hole up there ready to just drop our cables in and across and we'll put all this back together later on in the video so you'd never know we've done it once there's been a bit of a paint job done on the filling. We always leave these filled and ready to decorate. We did drop the spotlights and have a nosy across, but we couldn't do it without making these little holes in the ceiling. So let's have a look at this new gateway with the power off. I thought we'd do it safely. So we are just doing the changeover at the moment and you can see this looks different to the old one. It has similar layout to the three phase variation. So if you've not seen a, Video on the three phase one, we shared that three or four videos ago, but the SPD lives up at the top now. So the prior variation had it down in this bottom corner. Uh, that's moved. We've now got the grid input over here, which is 125 amp rated. We've got our smart port, which has dropped down to 63 from the 125 as was. We've got our bypass switch up here, which is the new feature on the gateway compared to the old version. There is the capability now to um, bypass the system if it needs it and revert back to a hardwired connection to the grid. So actually for relay or contact fails, you can do that. We've got one inverter output port here, come back to that in a minute, and then we've got our backup port, which is again 125 amp rated, this one C63. The kit now comes with a ground link kit, for those of you who've seen my short musings on that and putting an electrode directly into it and the issues you can sometimes get with that if you um, have got overlapped earthing systems or issues with the electrode in terms of voltage difference to the earthing system in the dwelling. So the, my advice is to always tie your earth rod into the main earth bar and then link out here. But they actually provide a linking wire anyway now after all that waffle. So that comes in the kit for you to link out the earth bar into the ground terminal should you need to. Um, so that's actually there, present and correct. The other point no, with the front cover on will make more sense. Have a look at this with it fired up so you can hear if it buzzes or not. But you can see there's a spare inverter port there that's kind of pre-slotted, ready to cut out. And the gateway comes with a couple of lugs, which you can use to fasten into the buzz bar. And these here. So you can pop those into the buzz bar and then they sit in the top of the breaker of your own size and rating as desired in there. So if you want to pop a, an EV charger in or um, another inverter stack, you know, there's the potential to power it from there. And I believe there's other versions of this gateway coming which have different configurations on the breakers, um, same as the three phase options do. But this particular one, which is, I think the very first one going in in the UK, um, this is how it comes out the box. We managed to get our hands on a few of these because the gateways were in scarce supply. So we've jumped on a few for our next projects. Lots of our customers are wanting these silent options now. And um, yeah, that's the key difference is really silent. There's no longer three inverter inputs as standard out of the box. The smart part has been derated to 63 amps and it does come with an earth fly linking lead. Um, and we'll see how all of this powers up in the meantime. Our sub main scoops across up here 
into a ceiling void. We've made and repaired some patches, as you'll see up there, and shoots along to where Matthew is just over there in the cupboard above is where the main intake is. I'll show you that in a minute. There's another access hole we had to make there just to fish our cables across. And again, we've patched all that, so you would never know. We've been there once that's had a lick of paint. Uh, down the end, we have got our signs in store. I'll show you this when we've got the power on and all the lights are back up and running, but uh, we've got a full stack of six battery tens. So that's 54 kilowatt hours of storage, 12 kilowatt inverter on top, I wanna say. And um, we've kept this as neat as we can. We're trunking down. Oh, that's the other difference with the gateway. It has this little styling finishing plate on the underneath. So we've zoomed under with our 75 by 75 trunking, just slotted a hole out the top of that. So we can come up and use the stuffers in the gateway. Everything's nice and hidden. Um, keeps it looking neat and tidy and you don't need to use the 150 by 150 trunking we had been using to sit the gateways on. Uh, this does have the slimmer bracket, like three phase one as well. So it sits a bit tight back to the wall. So you can just about get away with 100 mil trunking if you want to. It's just a bit tight on the front glands. Uh, it doesn't quite have enough depth for that, but you can do it. We've spaced off with washers before behind the back of the gateway to make that work. Um, but this has worked really well. Very happy with that. It's a 75 by 75 trunking. The shield on the front, as you can see, each side nicely finished. We've got our AC isolator down here for our stack, which is the usual Proteus uh, 63 amp rated breaker. And then we've dropped out the end of the trunk in there and just going to cleat that up. So I'll show you that when he's done it. But that's just our little last loop into the stack. And then we've got the required spacings just off the edges. It's tight space, but it is wide enough for the ventilation this kit needs, both top and down each edge. And this room is part of a utility area. It has smoke detection throughout the property. It also has lightning protection as well. This is uh, a very old and unique building that's had lots of work done over the years and lightning protection, smoke detection, everything we need on that front is already in place, which was a nice win. We have popped a little um, part on the outside and that is for connecting in a generator, should the customer decide to. And you can see it is just a little commander socket here that we've got and 32 amps. So if you want to plug a little backup Jenny in, you can do that and then you can feed the system. If you've lost the grid for a while and you wanted to back your batteries back up with a bit of diesel power or petrol, you can do that. We are on and this is absolutely silent. I'll go quiet so you can listen. Nothing. So there's no hum, no buzz. Totally quiet, which is absolutely what we want. And as we said when we were looking at this earlier, you have got your bypass here as well now for if you are... Um, needing to bypass all of the electronics if there's been a problem you can do so so we've got our grid coming in got the smart port then we've got our backup and then the inverter port as well and there is space for another one there if you need to we've got our isolator down there the stacks all on and powered and as always we've set the light on the front to show if it's charging or discharging green for charging there's no pb on this one as yet so it will uh, only charge from the grid and it's now sustaining the house loads because they come with roughly 40% in. So it's happily doing all that. And you can see the sock light on the side. So we're three batteries high out of the six. So we're around 40, 50%. And that'll just eat away at itself until the charging slot overnight now. Uh, with this, you can set the charging power lower if you wish. So if you want to take use of a full five hours slot with a large battery bank like this, you don't necessarily need to run at the full inverter rating for the whole duration you can set it to be a little bit smaller but obviously we've got 54 kilowatt hours here and there is a five hour window so you're going to need to be running at least 10 kilowatts if it's totally empty to refill it if you leave it to the maximum charge rating and you've got other things like heat pumps and EV chargers you can set off dynamic load limiting on those devices not so much the heat pump, but the EV charger, and then this will dynamically limit itself as well to protect the main service fuse. Um, so you do need to consider that rather than jumping everything on at the charge, start the cycle at full rating and leave them to sort of figure out between themselves what is dynamically loading, limiting where, you can kind of control it a little bit by setting your charge and discharge rates to account for that. Uh, but there's no EV charger on this one, there's no heat pump, so this is gonna be quite happy to sit in its window and, and do its thing. The size of the battery bank here is more for power cuts and redundancy for when that happens than running the home's entire consumption all day. Um, this customer has 
fair few power cuts and they want to make sure that they've got some juice in the bank for if that happens to ride it out. But yeah, these are battery tens, so nine kilowatt hours per module, 54 kilowatt hours in total, big beastie inverter on the top, and that is all now ready to go. So at the main intake, you can see we have got our supply here and it already had a nice isolator in position. It's a three phase board that has been converted to single phase fuse and we popped our little switch fuse down the side of there which has our submain going off to our gateway location and then taps through directly into that distribution board. So we've got no singles on show anywhere and everything wired in where it needs to be. The basic principle is power is taken from the meter down to the gateway and then returned back into the house consumer unit. And that keeps the lights on when the grid goes down. So I hope you've enjoyed a look through this system. And as I said at the start of this video, if you're a customer who is looking for a system like this in your home, please do get in touch with us. There'll be a link in the description. It'd be an absolute pleasure to propose something like this for you. Massive thank you to our customers on this one, Matty and Nathan as well, for turning out another great install. If you've got any questions about this system from an installer's point of view or a customer's, drop them in below. We absolutely love those. And otherwise, we'll see you on the next one. Thank you.